All right. Okay, well, welcome guys to our sweet sugar bell. We're doing some Halloween candy sugar cookies this time. Uh, if anyone was in my last class, then you know Halloween is my favorite holiday. I actually started my sugar cookie decorating journey with Halloween cookies. So um, these are some of my absolute favorite season to decorate cookies for. Everyone thinks Christmas when they think cookies, but I think Halloween and I think they're so much fun. We're gonna be using a couple of different um, cutter sets from Sweet Sugar Bell. So we've got this uh, Shape Shifter One set, which has our um, large candy corn cutter, as well as um, a plaque cutter that we're gonna be using as a wrapped candy. We've also got this uh, stacked circle cutter. We're using a couple different sizes to make different sized candies. And then our 80 piece set also has a line cutter that we're gonna to use to make some stick candies. So few fun things here, but the most fun one that I think everyone's most excited about is we're going to do a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, we've got it and here. I'll kind of show you a jack-o'-lantern full of candy. So it's a little, a little candy bucket full of little sprinkle candies. Um, super easy, basic shape that you can make into this fun design. So we'll get started with that one. Um, so first, obviously, I'm just going to take my plain baked cookie. I like to use my sweet sugar bell turntable. It just helps me have a lot of control over where my icing is going without having to move around my cookie too much. Um, so first thing I'm going to start with is I'm actually going to use my candy corn cutter and my sweet sugar bell uh, food marker. And I'm going to mark off a curve for the top of my pumpkin using just the bottom curve of this cutter. Like use what you got, right? So I'm just gonna mark that so I know how big I want my actual pumpkin to be. So I just kind of eyeball it. I'm like, eh, little above halfway. I'm gonna just mark a little curve there. So nothing crazy, just giving myself a guideline. Then the next thing I'm obviously gonna do, we're gonna outline. We're gonna outline with orange because we're doing a pumpkin. Um, if you've taken any classes from Sweet Sugar Bell before, then you know we use two different uh, consistencies for our icing. So we use an outline consistency, which I like to put in piping bags. I just feel like I have more control over them that way. This is like the consistency that came right out of my mixer just with food coloring added. Um, I don't thin it down much more than that. I like to think of it as like a toothpaste consistency and that's going to hold in our thin flood consistency on our cookie. It's like science that I don't understand, but it works. It's kind of like magic. Um, I also find that if I'm using tips, they tend to get kind of clogged because royal icing does dry really quickly. If that is happening, you can use the end of your little uh, scribe tool to clean out the end of that tip just to be super careful because this is like a sharp needle. Don't stab yourself. I have done that. <laughs> so now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to outline just this bottom portion that's going to end up being our pumpkin bucket. So I'm going to get down low so I don't block you guys with my head. I like when I'm outlining, I like to hold my piping bag far as I can away from my cookie. Oh, see that happens sometimes. It's okay. Just a little air pocket in our icing. Um, I let the icing fall where it's along the edge where it's going to go. I find I get a lot straighter lines and a lot cleaner lines if I don't try and fight the icing to force it where I want it to go. Um, it does take a lot of practice because there is a lot of like, I have to let go of control in this situation. And that can be hard, especially for creatives who want everything to be perfect. But I promise the further you can get away from that cookie, the better it's going to fall. So now that I've got that outlined, I'm going to let it sit for just a second. So my outline hardens and I'm going to pull out my flood consistency. I like to put my flood in the squeeze bottles. It's just a lot cleaner this way, a lot easier. I'm using again, same size tip. Um, it's just our number two tip, I believe, or number one, might be a number one, can't remember. A small one, small writing tip, and I'm going to just shake this in case it got a little separated in my bottle. If you pre-make your icings, which I recommend, um, I also recommend putting them in the fridge, or if it's just going to be for a couple of hours in the freezer, that is the best way that I've found to keep my icing from separating on me. If it does separate, we do actually have um, mixers that you can put down in these bottles that you can stir it back up 
or you could use like a chopstick or something like that. But if you can keep it from separating, that's always easier. <laughs> so now we're gonna go in with our flood icing. Be careful shaking it. We don't want it to go splattering all over your kitchen. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and flood in this portion. I do, when I flood, prefer to keep it slightly away from the edge and I don't fill it all the way because the last thing you want is that flood icing to come pouring over the edge of your barrier. And if you put too much, no barrier is that strong. <laughs> so our goal is to keep it in there. And then we can just use our scrag tool and just kind of scrape it out to the edges and into all the corners and crevices. I also sometimes like to give my cookie just a little shake just to level out um, the top layer of icing. If your flood consistency is about a shampoo consistency, which is what I usually recommend, um, it should self-level, shouldn't have any problems. But if you do, you can always just give it a little shake, just <laughs> make sure it levels out nice, okay? So now that we've got that, I wanted to add just a little detail to our little pumpkin buckets. So we're gonna take our yellow flood consistency and just add a couple little dots just to give it a little texture. Um, again, I put these in the fridge or the freezer in between using them so that they don't separate. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that tip out a little bit because royal icing, it hardens quickly, which is nice, but also annoying. So. You have to constantly kind of be cleaning it out of places. So we're gonna add a couple of just strategic little dots. This is called a wet on wet technique. So another reason why you wouldn't want this to be overly filled, because if you add more wet on there, it may force it over the edge. So we're gonna pray I didn't put too much on here. And add just a few little dots of color, make it strategic. I don't know. Just think it's kind of cute. Adds a little something. Okay. Yeah. And if you do them while both icings are wet, it should just settle right in and it'll just be like one continuous layer. So there's our first little portion of this cookie. If you've never worked with royal icing, then this is going to be kind of a disappointment, but you have to wait. You gotta let these dry. We have to let our layers dry in between and moving it too much can cause that top layer to crack if your top layer is dry and your bottom layer is still wet. So I always recommend leaving them to sit before you add anything else on top for at least 30 minutes out on the counter. If you have a dehydrator, you can put them in there for like 10 minutes just to dry that top layer, or you can put them in front of a fan and that can sometimes decrease your time down to about 20 minutes. Um, waiting for those, but be very careful with the fan so you don't end up with ripples across the top of your icing. But I'm going to go ahead and magically switch out this wet one for a dry one so we can move on and see more of this cookie. Ta -da! Just kidding. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add our candy in our candy bucket. We want this top layer to be fully dry because we don't want any sprinkles to stick down here, okay? So I used my white icing to give myself a place to put my candy. You could use any color. You could just use the orange if you think it looks more continuous. The yellow might look good. I just went with white because it was easy. <laughs> White's easy. You don't have to add too much food coloring to it. So I'm just gonna make sure again that the tip of my if you don't want to have to constantly clean out your tips too, if you set them in like a damp paper towel that also will prevent that from happening. Little trick of the trade. So we're gonna come in here and I'm just gonna do a little arch. So we have like candy coming up over, over filling our little candy bucket. So gonna again, pull away so I get a nice clean curve and then just bring it down where I want it to stop. And you can see like that's not the cleanest line but that's okay because we're gonna cover it with so many sprinkles. So now I'm gonna pull out my white flood icing and just fill in that uh, portion that we just marked off. I don't have to mark off the bottom part because this orange bit of icing will act as a barrier at the bottom there. 
And remember guys, if I'm like talking too fast, if you're confused, if you want something clarified, just put a message in that chat and my other Emily friend can help and she can answer your questions on our Sugar Bell team here um, and get the questions to me so I can help you answer them. I always like to wipe off my scribe tool on like a wet paper towel in between using it just so I don't get any colors mixed in from the last thing that I pushed around with it. Find that that's helpful. Okay. So while that icing is nice and wet, I'm gonna take a plate just so that I don't make a huge mess. I'm gonna set my cookie on the plate and I'm gonna pull out sprinkles. These are just some fun uh, colored non pareils that we got that are from the Sweet Tooth Fairy line that you can get there at Michael's. You can use any sprinkles you want. They have tons of Halloween specific sprinkles that are really fun. Um, anything small that looks kind of like candy, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just sprinkle a few on here to stick to our white icing. And you want as many as you can get. So this is why I recommend putting it in a plate or maybe putting it over your sink, uh, over the trash can. That might not be sanitary, but over something so that uh, we don't get sprinkles just everywhere. Um, and some are gonna fall off, some aren't gonna stick. You may have to kind of push them around. That's another thing you can do with like your scribe tool. Just kind of push them in, make sure. It looks like a full bucket of candy. We don't want to jip anyone on their bucket of candy, you know? I want everyone to get a full bucket. So we'll just make sure that those are kind of sticking down to our icing. You can even like tip your cookie up a little bit. Oops, see, I'm making a mess. Oh, well. That's what vacuums are for, right? We're gonna stick as many as we can. If you wanna get real fancy and get like some bigger pieces and stuff, Sweet Sugar Bell also has these really cool um, sprinkle like tweezers. Not great for tiny non pearls but if you're placing like little eyeballs or something like that, like they're very helpful. <laughs> so now that we've got candy on this uh, candy bucket, see it like I told you, they're just gonna keep falling off. So now that we've got some candy on this candy bucket, I'm gonna swap it out one more time and we're gonna add the face and the handle and add all the little details that'll make him look real special. So movie magic. Sneak all this out of the way. Okay, so now we've got our, our cookie. We're ready to add our final details. I like to freehand my faces. I think they look more homemade. I think they it makes each one unique. It's kind of fun. Um, maybe if you're decorating with kids, let them put their own face on their pumpkin cookie. Um, if you want them to be more precise, you can always uh, trace a pattern um, and cut it out on a piece of paper or on a piece of plastic that you can hold down and then trace it on that way. Um, but like I said, these are homemade and you want them to look homemade. You want people to know that like these weren't made in a store. They were made by your own two hands. So I'm going to go back to my sweet sugar bell um, food color marker. And I'm just going to draw a little pumpkin jack-o'-lantern face on here. I went with like rounded triangles because that's like the classic. So I tried to find kind of right in the middle, do a little rounded triangle nose. And then that way it was kind of centered so I didn't get my eyes off centered because even though I'm all about the homemade, that would bug me. <laughs> and okay, so now we got our eyes, our nose for his mouth. I like a smiley jack-o'-lantern. You can make them scary. You can make them laughing. I don't know. You could do anything you want. We're going to go with a, just the classic kind of smiley, missing a couple teeth jack-o'-lantern guy. Okay. Is this that they're missing teeth or that they have teeth? I could never, I have no idea. But there we go. <laughs> now we've got a little outline to follow. Um, so I'm going to pull out my black icing. I think I gave this tip in our last class on black icing, but if I didn't, um, using a lot of black food coloring can just really make your icing taste awful. So what I usually do is I save all of my colors from any other cookies I've done, mix every dark color you have 
and then add the smallest amount of black you can at a time until you get a shade you want. Also with dark colors, they're gonna develop over time. So the longer you let them sit, the darker they're gonna get. So it may look just dark gray, cover it with a wet paper towel, let it sit for 30 minutes and come back and check on it and it'll look more black. That way you're not adding so much black that we're just dyeing everybody's mouths black and it doesn't taste good anymore. Same with if you're doing reds or dark greens, those are uh, those can be tricky colors to get with white icing. So, okay, I didn't put a tip in this one, but you can, or you, you can actually use these bags without tips if you'd like. It's a lot easier with tips though, I will say. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and just outline what we drew here. Uh, give ourselves an outline for our black flood icing. Ooh, I'm making a mess. Someone's trying to break into our studio. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> uh, gonna go ahead and outline our mouth. And have it all. So we're ready to add our flood icing in. This is kind of, it's like when you watch those videos on Instagram and stuff, it makes it seem like we're going so fast. That's the thing that was the hardest for me to accept when I first started this. Decorating royal icing sugar cookies is a slow process. It's gonna take a while. Like everything you're doing, you you go so slow so it looks precise. And every video you see online, I promise, is sped up at least three or four times. <laughs> um, I'm gonna spin this around and also just add my bucket handle while I'm here with this uh, outline consistency black. So that's, that happens, no big deal. We'll just touch it up. And then um, I actually have my little scraper tool and I'm gonna go ahead and just scrape this black off. Just be very careful when you're scraping black to try really hard not to mush it down onto the cookie because it does have a lot more dye than other colors and it will make a mess. <laughs> so, all right. So now we'll just go in with our flood consistency black. I put this one in a piping bag as well, but again, I prefer the bottles. I just was ran out of clean ones. So, <laughs> so we'll put, we're just gonna flood in his eyes. Careful not to put too much so it doesn't overflow. And his mouth. Okay. So now just for fun, because I think it adds, uh, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of outline the bottom of this bucket so that it gives it a little more detail. I just pulled out my detail consistency of the orange and just give it, you know, some, some dimension. I'm gonna try not to pipe over my little yellow dots. And then clean up where I made a mess here. And there you have it. We've got a little pumpkin bucket full of candy ready for Halloween. I just think this is such a cute idea. It's with the candy corn cutter, so you could also make some candy corn cookies to go with it with the same colors. Um, just a really fun little, uh, shape shift there. Okay, so now let's make some candy to go on the platter with our little candy buckets. So I'm gonna move this guy out of the way. So cute. And we're gonna move on to our little wrapped candy. While uh, while we're getting set up for that, do you mind if I sneak a question in here from uh, the yeah, chat? Yeah, go for it. 
Awesome. Um, so Juanita was asking, what is a good cookie size or does it not matter in terms of like the thickness of the cookie? The thickness of the cookie. I do, I have a cookie rolling pin that like has lines on the outside, discs on the outside that keeps my thickness consistent. But I usually just tell people anywhere around a quarter inch, depends on if you want your cookies more crunchy or if you want them more soft. Um, the sweet sugar bell recipe is kind of a softer cookie. I think a thick cookie gives you a better balance with the icing, but some people prefer more icing to cookie. It's all just a personal preference. So if you want it to be thick enough that it's not gonna fall apart while you're handling it. But other than that, pretty much a personal preference thing. Okay, that's a great question. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our uh, wrapped candy cookie. So we're gonna do this one blue cause that was the color I was feeling. Um, you guys could change up any of these colors or do the same design in a couple of colors and make your plate really fun. Um, I'm going to start again with my white outline consistency. I'm going to go ahead and outline these like bump pieces on the outside that are going to end up being like the twisty parts of our candy wrapper with white. And I'm not going to bother outlining the inside of it, just the outside edge, because I'm going to put a blue circle in the middle. If your outline icing overlaps like this, totally fine, because you're going to fill the whole thing in anyway. So don't worry about keeping it like one consistent line, especially with little curves like this. You're going to make yourself crazy. Uh, another thing to remember is you want to keep consistent pressure on your piping bag so that you're getting a consistent line. If you have any air bubbles in your bag or anything like that, it can break off your icing. Not the end of the world. Just go again. I'm going to do this one again a little further out because I felt like that curve could have been better. Okay. So now that we've outlined it with our white, we're going to go in and just do a big circle with our blue to make our candy shape. Circles are the hardest thing to outline on cookies. And if you really want it to be a perfect circle, at some point you got to give that up because I've never outlined a perfect circle in my entire cookie career. <laughs> but you can always push the icing around to make it look a lot more perfect later. So don't stress if your outline isn't perfect. We're going to go ahead and do a circle-ish on this cookie. Plus, cookies don't always bake perfect, you know? So you have to be really willing to just let it be what it is. And in this case, it's a circle with a very flat side. And that's fine. <laughs> so now that I've got my outline done, I'm going to let that kind of dry again. We want it to crust just a little bit so it can hold that uh, flood icing in. I'm going to go ahead and shake up my blue flood icing, get it all ready. And down at the bottom of the bottle is kind of the goal here. Um, again, I tend to try and cover my tips so I'm not just shooting icing all over my kitchen, <laughs> but it, things happen. That's what paper towels are for. Okay, now that we got that shook down, we're gonna go ahead and just fill in the middle. And just like we did with the pumpkin bucket, be very careful not to over flood, especially if your flood's a little on the thin side, like this one got a little thinner than I usually would do. So just be careful not to put too much so that we don't end up overflowing. So I'm probably gonna stop there. If I need to add more, I can, but I'm just gonna push this around and see how it goes. This is the nice thing about the turntable is like, I don't have to actually touch my cookie or move it too much. I can just do a little turn on my turntable and call it a day. So easy. Okay. So now that I've kind of flooded that very not circular shape, <laughs> oh, 
we would need to again and it's everybody's least favorite part let that dry um i caught the edges of my outline right here so i'm just gonna like poke them back in so they're not sticking out all scraggly oops there we go okay so once again we have to let our cookie dry but due to amazing movie magic, I'm gonna just go ahead and swap it out for a dry one so you can see what we would do next. Um, be very careful uh, with your flooded cookies if you have to move them so that we don't knock any, knock into the wet icing or knock any icing off the edge or anything. Uh, try and keep them as level as possible while you're moving them. Yay. So now we're going to go ahead and fill in the white portion of this cookie with our white flood icing. Um, while you're doing this, just be careful uh, with the edge there of the blue that we don't overlap too much. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put some white in there. If your flood consistency is thick enough, uh, you can fill it most of the way in. I am just a chicken and overfilled cookies are my nightmare. So I don't cry over much, but icing spilling over the edge of my cookie gets me close. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in with my scribe tool, fill that. Fill in that wrapper. There we go. And then everyone's favorite part, we let it dry again. These are smaller sections, so they probably won't take as long to dry or as long to crust over, but we still do have to give it a second. So I'm just gonna, oops, see, careful. Don't touch your, don't touch your wet cookies. <laughs> Yikes. That's gonna stain. Exciting. Oh, okay. <laughs> so now we're just gonna add some details to really make this candy pop. So my favorite part is just adding the little white uh, spot on our candy so that it looks like a shiny wrapped candy. Um, you just wanna do with your outline consistency I like to just hold the tip directly against the cookie, push down so I get kind of a little ball of icing and then just pull it slightly to the side. And that gives you like a little comma shape almost on there. That makes it look like you have a little light spot. Then I'm just gonna go around the edges of my wrapper so that it kind of has some more definition to it. I'm gonna go on this side. And again, the icing is going to kind of go where it wants to go, so give it some leeway. And then I'm going to go ahead and do just a couple little spots coming off of my blue that look like the wrapper kind of crinkling. All right, and in these little details, is it all right if I sneak in with a few questions here? Yeah, go for it. Awesome. Uh, Robin wanted to know uh, when you bake your cookies, do you use nonstick silicone mats, parchment? What what do you what do you recommend? Again, that's a real personal preference thing. I prefer a silicone mat. Um, some people prefer silicone mats doubled up. Some people prefer parchment. Uh, depends on what you want. <laughs> like what works for your oven too. The biggest thing with baking that a lot of people don't understand is there's so much uh, variance with your ovens and with oven temperatures and what pans you're using and what liners you're using um, that can change so many things about if your cookie spreads, if you need to refrigerate the dough beforehand. And that's all just trial and error. Through my trial and error, I have decided that I prefer a silicone mat on my baking sheets at 350 in my oven. 
but like I've gone through, I've used parchment, I've used perforated mats, I've used everything out of the sun. I put them directly on the pan and that's just what works for me. Silicone mats are my preference. So if you want to know what I like, that's what I like. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. And yeah. then, uh, Courtney, um, was, uh, last time she made her flood icing, uh, she had a bunch of small bubbles that popped up in there. Uh, she wanted to know yeah. would that happen to be due to overmixing or what could have caused that? Yeah, that can happen because of overmixing. It can also happen if you get a little too thin and then unfortunately just like kind of always happens. Uh, my advice and the advice I've always been given is if you can wait to put your icing in the bottles, just leave it in your bowl that you mixed it in, cover it with a damp paper towel and let it sit for about 20, 30 minutes, then pull that paper towel off uh, and go through with your scribe tool and just pop any bubbles that have popped up on the surface before you bag it. That's just the best way. Um, you can also just let it sit for a while. Then a lot of the bubbles tend to come to the top. If you're piping it out and you're finding that you have a lot of bubbles, um, going through and popping them and then going through with your scribe tool can help a lot too. It's just one of those things that everybody kind of deals with. Leaving it out though is the best way to get the most of them out before you put it in your bottles or your bags, whatever you're using. Okay, so all done with our little candy cookie. So I, those were our two big cookies, but I thought this plate just like really is the most fun when it has all these different little sizes and styles of candies on there. Um, plus mini cookies are my favorite because I can eat a lot of them and not feel guilty about it because they're so small. So we're going to show you a couple of different little minis that can go with the set just to make it look a little more full a little more interesting. I'm going to start with just these like, I like to pretend they're like lemon lime or something. Uh, stick candies. Those are the colors I used, but if you like different colors, oh, there we go. Just a little stick candy. Um, you can do them like peppermints, whatever is fun for you. Uh, I'm going to just, I used in my 80 piece sweet sugar bell set, they have this, um, cutter, which is actually a backslash in the letters and numbers set, but I thought it made the perfect size little stick candy. So that's what we used it for today. That's the nice thing about these cutters is anything you can think of, you could turn this into and it's so versatile in that, in these sets that have so many different options. So I'm going to go ahead and just outline this one in green since we're going to do a little lemon lime hard candy action. Again, with my outline consistency coming in and go around the edges of my cookie. This is like a rounded rectangle too, which is nice. Then I don't have to worry about having like really sharp corners, which can be a little harder. And then let that dry a second while we shake up our green flood icing. Must have anticipated using a lot more green because I made a lot of it, but <laughs> the nice thing about royal icing is it does last a really long time. If you put it in your freezer, it could last for months. In your fridge, at least a month. Just may need to be re-stirred. On the counter even, it lasts for like at least a week. So it's very much just straight sugar. So it doesn't really go bad. Gonna go ahead and flood this in. I think this is what really drew me to Royal Icing Cookies is I love watching cookies just flood in like that. So satisfying. Do you guys have any more questions? Yeah, we have a few uh, few questions in here. Um, sure. Juanita also asked, I know some people use almond or vanilla flavoring in their cookie. Uh, could you use other flavors as well, if you'd like? Absolutely. I've done around Christmas time, I've used uh, peppermint in my cookies. I've also just done lemon is one I really love because I feel like it gives a good offset to the really sweet icing. Um, you can use pretty much any kind of flavoring and you can get all kinds of flavorings at Michael's um, for different food like emulsions and, and flavoring. So there's lots of options out there for sure. Um, vanilla and almond are the most 
traditional, but lemon is very popular nowadays. I also, you could always add like, if you can replace one egg in your recipe with a quarter cup of pumpkin and then add some pumpkin spice, that's what I usually do to make a pumpkin spice cookie around fall. Um, things like that are pretty easy substitutions that you can find a lot of instructions for online. Okay, uh, so we went ahead and flooded this little guy. And now we're just gonna add like some little details to him. Again, he would have to dry, but thank goodness I brought another one. <laughs> and we're gonna add some yellow details to this guy. So I just went with stripes, but whatever tickles your fancy, cause it's your candy and you get to do whatever you want. So I just, um, when I'm doing little details like this, uh, piping, I like to get low, get a wide stance. So I feel like my arms are steady, my hands are steady. I steady my hand against my other hand because I tend to shake a lot, which is always fun. And you just want to touch down, pull across, and then touch down again to kind of tie it down. Okay. So it's some little stripes. And then just like with our blue candy that we did, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little light spot so it looks like it's shiny there we go we have a shiny little stick candy to add it with it and this is a great one for mom or dad to steal if they're like i don't want a whole cookie but i would like a couple bites of a cookie so these are these are my favorite size and then um uh, we can do something very similar with a circle cutter. This is, I just used a couple different sizes out of this like stacking circle set that we have. So if you're baking smaller cookies like this, just remember to bake cookies that are similar sizes on the same sheet. Uh, if you put this in with your big pumpkin bucket cookies, they may burn. So keep an eye on the smaller ones, they cook faster. Uh, we'll do this one yellow. Like I told you before, outlining circles is my nemesis. So we'll see how this goes. But we're gonna go ahead with our outline icing. Outline our circle. This is one time where having this turntable is like the best thing ever. Kind of eyeball. And that overlapped a little, that's fine. Cause we're gonna fill the whole thing in anyway. So overlap is just fine if you're not super precise on it. Come in with our yellow flood icing and we'll flood that in. When I do circles, I like to start my flooding in the middle and work my way out so that I don't overfill them. These are, this shape is the shape I tend to overfill more than any other. And then I just push my icing out to the edge. Kind of looks like mustard. Okay, so we'll just push it out gently so that we don't get overfilled. Okay, so a little, that actually turned out way better than I anticipated. Pretty happy with that. <laughs> and then we'll grab one that's already dry so we can add a little detail to it. So I think of round candies like this and I think of them having like a little swirl on them. So we're gonna add a little swirl of blue. You guys can use your imagination as to what flavor this candy would be, I don't know. <laughs> But I always like to start in the middle and then just kind of let it do its own thing. Like I said, it's better to not try to control it. It's gonna do what it wants anyway. Okay. Um, a fun thing that you can do with like any kind of cookie that you're trying to make look like candy, uh, I like to use sanding sugar. 
Uh, I use it a lot at Christmas time to make like snow effect and stuff. But around Halloween, this is fun to use to add a little texture to your cookies. I love the crunch of the sugar on there as well. Um, we've got with the Sweet Tooth Fairy line, they've got tons of different colors that you can get there at Michael's. This is just a white sanding sugar. We've got here like a silver and a purple as well, which are kind of fun. I'm going to go ahead and use white on this cookie, but yeah, lots of fun options that you can get there at Michael's. And I'm just going to pull my sprinkle plate back out so that I don't make a huge mess. And just sprinkle a little, some sanding sugar over the top of this to give it just like a little sparkle. A little something, something, right? Plus, who doesn't love the idea of just, oh, you have a very sugary cookie? Let's put more sugar on it. It's my favorite. Okay. And just kind of tap off your excess, and you have like a, it could be a sour candy now. It has like that sour gummy worm vibe to it. So, fun little round one. Um, the last one that I have is a very small cookie. This itty bitty um, circle cookie cutter is fun to use for like literally little bite-sized cookies. Um, they are really hard to flood. So I prefer, and this is kind of what I was talking about earlier with a little damp paper towel over your icing to keep, to get the bubbles out. I did waste kind of a lot here, but that's okay. This is a clean, damp paper towel. I'm gonna hand that off so we can toss it. But this had a lot of bubbles on the top of it. And now you can see it's pretty smooth. We don't have any bubbles. It's just ready to go. This is something that's really fun. You can have like even little kids help you with. We're gonna dip these instead of flooding them with a piping bag. We're just gonna dip them because they're so small and flooding them would be really hard. So I'm just gonna take them hold them upside down. You want to tuck it down into the icing so you make sure you cover the whole cookie. And let some of that come off so you don't get too much. It's kind of a, a technique you got to kind of work on and give it a little shake. And you have a perfectly flooded cookie in like no time. Sometimes if I'm doing just plain circles with like uh, sprinkles on them, I'll dip them instead of uh, flooding them because it takes so much less time. So I'm just gonna dip a couple of these and then we're gonna add some sanding sugar to them to make them look kind of like gumdrops. Mom, this is one of those things where if you're gonna have your kids help you with it though, cover your counters with something because they will get their fingers all up in it. Just dip one more just for fun. Also, if you want, you can always add like a couple dots of another color of flood color of flood icing on the top of there and swirl it around and then use this as like a marbling technique. I've done that with my husband. He thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> he got to feel like he was really decorating a cookie. Okay. So we've got a couple of those back on our sprinkle plate. I think this time we're gonna go ahead and try some silver sanding sugar just to give these a little more dimension. This is a little bit thicker of a sanding sugar too with a little more a little thicker uh, chunk to it. So you see it a little more on there. But I just like, I think it makes them look like little gumdrops or little sour candies. And they really are the perfect size for those of us who just want a snack that we can't possibly feel guilty about, right? So there's our little purple ones. Once those dry up, you could even add a little, a little dot to them as well, like we did with our other cookies, just to make them look shiny. Um, but I love the, the like crunchy look of that sugar on the top once it's dried. Oh. That's about all 
I have for you guys today. Um, do we have any more questions I can answer before we take off? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so sure. we had, so Royal was asking, I was wondering if you use the gel to make the outline icing. I'm not gel sure. Coloring? Yeah, I, I imagine yeah. that's what that, that I meant by that. Yeah, yeah I use um, gel or powdered food coloring, depending on what color I'm trying to get. You can get both of those at Michael's. Um, I like gel just because it doesn't thin it down as much. If you notice that you've added a lot and you feel like it's really thin, you can always add just a little bit more powdered sugar back to your icing. Um, if you feel like you already went past the toothpaste stage with your coloring. So that's always an option. Floral icing is really, um, pretty easy to fin to finesse. If it's a little too thin, add a little powdered sugar. If it's a little too thick, add a little water. Just make sure you add it a little bit at a time because it's easy to go too far one way or the other. Excellent. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, uh, Kay May was asking, could you use the scribe to move the outline of the cookie when you were doing the outline icing into a better position if it happened to you know, go a little wobbly or off track? Yeah, you could. Um, I recommend just scraping it off and kind of trying again. But if it's still wet enough, you can kind of push it out to the side. Definitely. Especially if it's just barely out of place. Yeah, that's something you could do. The scribe, or you could even use like your little scraper tool too. This has like a really small end here that you could use to kind of help with that as well more detailed pushing stuff around yeah awesome yeah that's a great tip great tip thank you yeah. um sarah asked uh when icing comes out of the fridge or freezer can you use it right away or do you have to bring it to room temp first um depending on how long it's been in there i like that it's a little firmer out of the fridge so i don't let it come all the way to room temp um, because then sometimes it ends up like really thin. Uh, but yeah, just as soon as you can get it to come out of your bag, you're probably good to use it. I like to use mine a little bit cold, but some people don't. So that's kind of a personal preference of how much control you feel like you have over the icing when it first comes out. If it's been in the fridge all night, it'll need to defrost probably <laughs> or in the freezer all night. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I think that about covers it. I'll just remind everybody as well that this class has been recorded. Um, it will be uploaded to the Michaels YouTube page as well as michaels.com slash classes in 24 and then 48 hours respectful, uh, respectively. All right. <laughs> Awesome. Other than that, if, you, if we're all set, then I guess we are good to end here. All right. Thanks so much, guys. It was a lot of fun.